Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic in a Love is Blind season four storyline to get to right here. Are Micah and Paul back together? She posted a very sentimental, heartwarming Instagram reel with her relationship and Michael, one that hasn't been seen before, and now he comments on it. I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me know. Am I reading into this? Follow me on Instagram at dneals. And also for behind the scenes content, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. This afternoon, I've got a surprise interview that I did with Susie Evans, um, the winner of Colton, or excuse me, <laughs> Clayton season of The Bachelor. You're going to want to listen to that. It's an interesting, fun ride. And let's get into it. Here is is Micah's Instagram reel. I'm a, I'm a little late to the party. As you guys know, I'm in the middle of traveling to the East Coast, so getting some content out has been a little slow. So here it is. Love is passion. Love is passion. Obsession. You know, just B-roll of them, black and white, canoodling. You have to remember, their season um, actually took place last year. Uh, it just aired, so it's new to us. But a year ago, they fell in love. Listen to your heart. And lots of kissy photos there. Hand in hand, hugging, canoodling. You love a good canoodle. Anyway, more or less all the same thing. And let's read what she had to say. A glimpse into our relationship through our own lens after filming. Paul, I'll always be so thankful that you came into my life. We shared something so special together, and no one will ever be able to replace that. No matter what, I'll always love you. Sometimes we have to let go of what we thought was meant to be, and although it's difficult, it's also an opportunity for growth. Thank you all for being a part of our journey. Paul responds and leaves a comment. And of course, this is always good when couples can either be together or not together, but at least do it in a healthy way. He says, my love for you isn't going anywhere. Maybe we're together, maybe we're not. But regardless, we'll still have that no matter what. Hey, Paul, how about you decide, are you guys together or not? Let me know. Um, other comments from alumni, you know, said all, you know, for the most part, nice things. But what's interesting is it got kind of ugly. You know, she was on Nick Vile's podcast last week. Let's watch a few of the clips here. What would you say your confidence level was that you would leave a married woman? I pretty much spent the entire day of my wedding crying. Honestly, I felt like I was walking up to the end of my relationship. What made you feel that though? In the days leading up to the wedding, there was like no reassurance at all um, on Paul's end. He was like really back and forth. And I feel like if you're kind of back and forth on a relationship or a marriage, it's like it's probably going to be a no. And yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a no. But at the same time, some people are have different brains and processing speeds. So sometimes it takes, you know, they always say like distance makes the heart grow fonder. Getting off of the reality show and dealing with the post-show tra trauma, you got you to gotta heal from that before maybe you did have a real relationship. And maybe this is just wishful thinking and I'm just wasting your time and my time right now. But I wonder if there's a scenario. And it might not be this one, but I wonder if there's a scenario where Micah goes on a podcast, shares her feelings and where she feels like things went wrong. And then, and then Paul talks to TMZ and they kind of have a little bit of a spit spat thing happening. Maybe it could lead to healthy communication if they end up, uh, I don't know, sharing receipts and overcoming that all. So there Paul's she definitely is. out here making some claims. That's just a fraction of the story, man. You know, Micah, welcome. How is your heart? We're just two best friends hanging out. Two besties. What was your very first reaction seeing Paul? What would you say your comp? All right, so you could go watch the whole thing. We already covered all of it. My thought is they are not together, but good to see maybe a healthy breakup. Although, you know, for not being together, right. it's pretty telling to post something. But then again, Micah wasn't the one who didn't want the relationship to go forward. She kind of had an intuition that Paul wasn't going to propose to her. She said, hey, Paul, you go first. And he said, no. And that's where it ended. And of course, then we had the, the butt grab gate where Paul was accused of grazing tush. You know, maybe maybe he did a backhand of the tush. Maybe he didn't. I, he didn't do a full cup. Obviously, that's unwelcomed regardless when you're, you know, trying to marry someone else. I know I just got married and there was no tush grabbing of non-brides happening at my wedding. Uh, but either way, that's where you can find that. Now, today, I've got 
It's dropping probably, you might have, it might have already dropped, I think, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Again, I'm on the East Coast, so my timing is all messed up. But today, I've got a special interview on Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. I want to share it with you guys right now. We have some free time. There isn't much in the news. This is an interview series I'm starting where I'm going to be interviewing, you know, reality TV people, but, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll venture away from there soon. But I smack suction cup a GoPro to the screen, and then I have two different DSLR cameras on both windows and a little lavalier mic on both of our, I think you can see there on the seatbelts. And we had a good conversation. I'm going to give you some of that right now. You're welcome for this. You're welcome. This is bonus. If you want to go watch this, you can watch it on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal, or wait for the weekend. It'll, it'll be airing over there. Or in what I suggest, you go listen to it on Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast today. In how you pursue relationships? Yeah, I think that's one. Yeah, I definitely, I, I did not tolerate lying to this day. If you, if you lie about one thing, like I mean, you probably shouldn't tell me if I look bad, but like other than that, like if you lie about your location or who you're with or something like that, like I am not going to be somebody that's like texting, tell me who's there. Like I am the least controlling person, at least in my mind compared to like how I see other people handle their relationships. But the second I find out there's a lie, I, I literally broke up with one of the nicest, actually like one probably the nicest guy i kind of regret it because he did lie to me about something and it was, was it a trivial lie or mm, was it a it was kind of a big lie and it was like to cover for somebody else who was doing something wrong he had melanoma <laughs> as well <laughs> you just make he these guys love melanoma. that was in reference to the fact that Susie mentions earlier on in this series that her boyfriend lied to her about having cancer this is all in the video it's wild don't you love these suction cups what great technology we have there. Let's just jump ahead and give you another clip. Everything differently from the way we, um, are you good? Oh, yeah. oh shit, did I post that? 29 minute mark, I gotta take that out. That's an edit I was supposed to take out of the video. Oh boy, we'll get rid of that. Either way, I did <laughs> do some business. That it was in New York. So at that point, it's a he said, she said for you. Totally. And I like didn't know Clayton that well, in all honesty. He was about to move into my apartment, and I was I was kind of against the moving into my apartment, but he was adamant. He was like, no, we need to live together. I was like, okay, crazy. Um, <laughs> so I, what, what was the percentage of trust? Because I mean, you already said you've had some trust issues. Yeah. So what percentage did you believe him? I believed him, I would say 95%. Um, like, th when I got the text and then I got her message, I was like, shit. And I texted him and I was like, honestly, I'm not gonna roast you, I'm not gonna out you, but if you cheated on me, just tell me and like, I'm not coming to Arizona tomorrow. I was literally gonna fly to Arizona the next day and drive across country with him. And I was like, it's cool, we're just gonna break up, it's fine, just be honest. And he was like, I swear to God, Susie, like, I promise you I would never do that. And I was like, okay, I trust you. But and the then, proof. What? Well, it was so <laughs> okay. So the wild stories. If you're if you're a, if you're a Love Is Blind fan and not a Bachelor fan, and you're not familiar with the story, we're getting resolution. But it's a wild scenario that Susie and Clayton were put in due to the lying nature of audience. So much so that Susie had to convince her boyfriend Clayton at the time not to sue someone else from all this fabrication. They went through hell and back. They're doing great, and it's always great to chat with people when they've got that hindsight and they've already overcome their issues and they can talk about it. So I want to thank Susie for jumping on Drive with Dave. The full podcast is going to be available today on the podcast, um, and you can go check that out right here, bachelorrushhour.com, or wherever you stream podcasts, just search Bachelor Rush Hour. All right, we'll be back with more content right after this.